Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm back with another video and today I thought I would just come on and open up the conversation of um, so a few tips, five tips actually, on how to work with ink and have a, uh, a better outcome for us. And uh, these are all things that I do or have done or am going to do because of mostly experience. Um, things that have happened and are happening still when I work with ink, when I try to share ink and that kind of thing. So I don't in any way consider myself an expert. I'm just four years back in the hobby and um, it's it's something that I want to hear your ideas too. So please um, in the comments let me know after you hear these. I'd like to hear the, the additional ideas that you have. So my first tip is to wear an apron when you're working with ink. I do this all the time. I'm not just coming on telling you. I actually do wear an apron every time I work with inks. Wow, my voice is just really dry today. Um, these I got in Canada and they're made by a company called, uh, well, it's, it's the label anyway says Kitchen Style. I got them at Canadian Tire. It was a fun time going up to Canada a few years back, maybe five years ago. So I got this one with the sunflowers and then this one with the chickens and so on on it. And I use both of these. They're, they're stained, but because of the, uh, especially this one, you can't really... Uh, no, you can't really see. I can see that there's purple ink on there, but you can't really tell because it's such a wild pattern to begin with. So um, I just, I put it on automatically. And uh, I've had a few near uh, accidents where I got a little drop of ink on my jeans and I just, I can't, not only can I not afford that, but I don't like to especially ruin uh, really good comfortable clothes. You know, if it's dress clothes, fine. <laughs> I don't, I hate dress clothes, but not my jeans, please, you know. Wow, I thought that, <clears throat> that I had this all worked out. Okay, along that same line, sticking with tip one, because we're not on two yet, um, I use this craft paper to um, wrap around a really thick piece of cardboard that uh, protects my desk. <coughs> my goodness. And that has really been a big help. Let's see, I'll lean over and you can see it. It's right here. Um, it's just something that I've done for quite a while because I am naturally inky all the time and it, it really saves my area. Now, I'm not inkophobic. I, my hands are covered with ink most of the time and, and I don't, I love to see the ink everywhere, but not on my wood, not on my blue jeans. No, thank you. Not on those things. Okay, so tip number two is to designate uh, some pens that you don't mind having stained or that are already stained in my case. Like, I didn't just set out and say, okay, <coughs> these are the pens that are gonna have ink that'll stain. It just happened and then they became my designated pens. Uh, the first one is the Wing Sung 3008. And I will admit that that didn't hurt as bad as when it happened with my Lamy uh, Vista because you know, my Lamy Vista is my, one of my favorite pens, but uh, I put Noodler's Rome Burning and it, st it stained it purple, which um, that's another thing. Now I do my tests first before I actually put the ink in the pen. So that kind of helps me. But even so, uh, it would have been nice if I had just not put it in this pen. But good grief, you know, there you have it. So once you've stained some pens, kind of designate those. And that way, until you really get to know the ink, then you're, you're in better shape. Okay, the third tip is uh, to individually bag ink samples. Now, this is something that I learned recently, not, well, maybe three or four months ago, when I sent someone some ink, I sent three orange samples and three blue. One of the blue samples leaked all over everything, and I had them, like I had three in one of these little uh, baggies that I get from the Dollar Tree. They're these, uh, let's see, these right here. I love them. They're really nice for that. But I wish now that I had uh, had these little pill bags that I have now and I can just individually bag the, the uh, samples and then put them in another protective bag because that would have helped quite a bit. It would have kept the labels to the other ones clean it would have contained things for the other person. I felt so bad. Um, you know, it's happened to me in receiving as well, but that was the first 
reported incident where I'd been the sender. So I felt really bad about that. But those little solutions like that, and I will go ahead and link the, the little bags so far are doing really good. They're just pill bags. And I'll, I'll link them down below where I found them. Um, I thought they were inexpensive. Okay, tip number four is something I'm also running into right now, which is save your ink bottles. Uh, not just your uh, vials, but your smaller ink bottles, because the my reaction is always throw everything into the recycling. But uh, right now it's really handy to have these bottles, you know, for that big 16 ounce ink bottle. So last night I cleaned three Diamine 30 mil bottles and uh, was going through, uh, this is a Colorverse 5 mil sample bottle. And the 15 mil ones are really good. I think I've used those all up now, but I'll be getting some more as I empty, um, as I use up ink. Uh, some of these, these came from Birmingham, and I think these are really nice, except that they have these little plugs in the top, which adds another protective layer. But I have heard from people that when you try to open those, it can be an inky mess. It can be really frustrating for people to try to get those off. So I haven't used those yet because I have a long ago experience in receiving where little um, glass bottles like that did leak. Uh, mostly the ink stayed in those. So anyway, uh, if you get ink from me right now, you're probably going to think I've, I've lost my... <laughs> I can think of another word because I've been watching a pen boy Roy or listening to the pen boy Roy uh, podcast. He's going to have me. Uh, <laughs> never mind. I don't need to go there. It's a really good one. Really good podcast. But now I, I'm picking up the language. I'm re-picking up the language. What was I saying anyway? <laughs> okay. I really lost it, didn't I? No, I, I was saying you're going to think I lost it if I send you ink right now because I'm like wrapping in cling wrap and then triple bagging and, you know, I'm like all nervous taping because that's why. Because back in the spring, I had that incident where I mailed the ink and it didn't work out so good. So I'm just trying whatever I can. If you have any tips on that, please put it in the comments because I'm still looking for a little more confidence in the ink mailing department. Um... So, okay, so don't recycle them, sa save them, uh, wash them out. Yes, recycle them by reusing them, but I mean, don't throw them in the recycling bin. Okay, so the uh, tip number five, the last one, is another one where it's, yeah, it's me. I should have learned this a long time ago because my more experienced pen friend will put right on the label. Let me see if I can get that where you can see it. Well, I don't know if we're going to have focus. He put caution. This is actually a sample of Bay State Cranberry, and he put caution right on the vial. Not in my letter, not in a note or a detached piece of paper, but right on the vial. And I should have learned uh, uh, from that, and that's what I'll be doing from now on. Uh, because uh, it has been discovered that <laughs> definitely Noodler's King Philip Requiem does, uh, can stain and did stain a pen friend's uh, demonstrator. So... You know, my cautionary note was separate from the ink. And of course, we get excited when we get an ink sample. So I wanted to mention that. So sender, if you're the sender of the ink and you have a suspicion or you or you know, then I would recommend labeling right on the label like uh, my pen friend did. Um, pen friend FD. I'll just give his initials. And then um, if you're the receiver, uh, then, of course, it helps to do a little bit of research but we get excited. So I under I totally understand that. And that is what I didn't do when I got the, the um, Noodler's Roam Burning. My pen friend sent me a sample and I just was so excited. <coughs> I went and put it in my favorite pen at the time, which is still one of my very favorite pens, my um, Lamy Vista. And it's not the end of the world. They certainly still sell those Vistas and I can get another one where I use only inks that I know won't stain because the Lamy Safari is, is as good of an option and I can use the same nibs. Uh, so I get the same writing experience without using the Vista. Uh, I can use that King Philip ink in there. But these two ships have already sailed. So these two are my designated um may stain or probably stains ink, you know, pens in my collection. So that would be 
that's pretty much what I wanted to say, I think, is just open the conversation because definitely, um, you know, inks are not all made equally, but I am crazy about vibrant colors. So it's going to be something I have to deal with in terms of staining and, <coughs> um, you know, caution. Cautionary notes are needed, definitely. So I hope this helps someone, even if it's a beginner. Or I still consider myself a beginner. I, I've been back in the hobby for four years. My time as a teenager years writing with a fountain pen was just popping a cartridge. It was very limited. I just had, well, basically back then, because I didn't have a lot of money, I just could, uh, my mom would give me a couple cartridges from her package. So it was always blue because she liked blue. And I really liked black better. Excuse me. But, uh, so I'm not at all trying to be, you know, claim expert or anything else. In fact, the only reason I know any of these things is because of the experiences I've had, you know, with having to strip really fast and try to get ink. And actually the ink that I did drop, I can't remember. I want to say it was Diamine Amazing Amethyst. And I thought for sure that jeans were a goner. But I raced to the bathroom and got the cold water running and, you know, got the... I guess I grabbed the Dawn detergent on the way and I got that out, but I thought that was pretty lucky. <clears throat> that is just not always the case. So it keeps it more fun if we aren't, if we uh, minimize our catastrophes, I guess. So that's all. I just wanted to do a quick video and open the conversation and I look forward to your tips down in the comments. I learned more from you than I could ever, you know, uh, probably tell you. So thank you for watching and uh, stay inky, but be safe about it. <laughs> Bye for now.